Welcome to the Harnessing Happiness podcast. Upbeat vibes generated and transferred to you. Now here's your host, Sarah J. Naylor. Hello and welcome to Harnessing Happiness with myself, Sarah J. Naylor. Thank you, as always, for stopping by and uh, taking time to listen to my podcast. I love having you all as my fabulous listeners, especially knowing that you're all over the world. It's awesome because I do have a sneaky look at my stats on a regular basis. So so thank you very much for for being here. It's great. And I've got the fabulous Kerry with me today, who I'm going to uh, hand over to. As you know, my guests always do a far better job of introducing themselves. So Kerry, over to you. Please do take centre stage and introduce yourself to my fabulous listeners. Thank you so much for having me, Sarah. And I'm really excited to be here with your listeners today. My name is Kerry Moncrief, and I'm a public speaking and communication confidence coach. That What that means is I've I started my uh, journey training, gosh, it was over 20 years ago. I've been teaching public speaking since I was 21, then have transitioned into working with women who are trying to make an impact in the world. That can be through a small business or as an entrepreneur or potentially, you know, they're starting a, a nonprofit and trying to help in that way. And really, um, it comes from wanting women to step in to knowing they can speak and speak as they feel good in their own skin. I think there's a lot of pressure to sometimes to take the stage and to do these things. And people start to show up on all the different platforms and stages we have now, like the social media platform is very different than a keynote stage um, feeling. And sometimes one will, you know, be make somebody more anxious than the other. And so it's really about when you show up, you feel good speaking, you know, kind of, um, the speaker brand you're trying to put out there and you're connecting to your audience in a way that feels good to you and kind of saying, take the ick out of, you know, imitating somebody else or just kind of really trying to harness um, how your voice can match the mission that you're on in life. Interestingly, with what you've just said there, that confidence, I think, comes with with being yourself, really sort of trusting in yourself and, and believing in pa- you know, being, oh, gosh, what, what are the words I'm looking for? <laughs> I'm struggling now. That's not what you want as a public speaker. <laughs> but then that's me being authentic. You know, mm-hmm. it's actually, and it, it's taking that, it's embracing it, and you know, not worrying about having those faux pas because actually, I think that then makes that connection with the audience because they then don't feel like you're just up there and you're really sort of stilted and, you know, you are somebody that you 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 are something that's unattainable. Actually, if you're delivering a message about sort of empowerment or anything like that, it's you know, it's embracing all those. Mm-hmm. All those wrinkles, because let's face it, I mean, I think the perfection is in the imperfection because we're all fabulously unique individuals, which we need to embrace, don't we? Definitely. For me, I oftentimes when I was working with more students in the classroom settings, I've always worked in like the college level and, um, you know, I get all these like, you know, 18 to 22 year olds, mostly 18. It was usually one of the first classes I took and they would come into this classroom and they just, if if looks could injure or hurt somebody, they all were giving me those daggers because they really, it's pretty much everybody's biggest fear is to, to speak in public. And oftentimes I'd work with, and I noticed it happened more with my female students is they would get to this point, they're developing their their speaking ability, their voice, they're starting to really kind of, you know, finesse things. And from my perspective, it's getting better. They sound like they're stepping into that and yet they'd hold themselves back and they're like, what else should I do? And it got to a point where I, at the, towards the end, I'm like, at some point you have to trust your voice and trust your message. And that's going to be within. And there's no tick of a, oh yes, you had perfect eye contact here and you did the, all the things in this formulaic way that's going to make you feel like you're ready to do that. And that's, I mean, it takes practice and preparation. And I think that's one of the things with speaking that I love so much. It's one of those, when I um, coach, it's a, it's a skill, right? So it's not, some people have an innate ability mm-hmm. to feel more comfortable speaking and have the person personality that shows up well when they do specific talks and that kind of thing. But overall, it's something that can be learned. And I'll, oftentimes, I, I've heard too many times mm-hmm. that I'm comes up in, well, we haven't even talked about it, but um, in, in the book that we're both um, <laughs> co authored in with my dad, Think for yes, the Fairy. Yes, right? we, so, we need to talk about that. We will talk, we will come on to that. Yes. Yeah. But I, I kind of speak a little bit about that, that aspect of just, you know, be, being able to recognize that I heard too many times, like, I don't want to grow my business 
bigger because I'm going to get asked to speak more or I'm going to have to give more presentations or I'm going, and it was like, it, it was like a record scratch for me because I was like, what? The whole point is to grow your business and, mm-hmm. and you know, like do that. And really realizing that there was the same, it's, it's, that, it's like, kind of like an entrepreneur, right? We're afraid of certain things sometimes. Like, what if it doesn't work out? What if I say the wrong thing? What if I develop the wrong program? Um, it's the same fear kind of anxiety that comes up is I don't mm-hmm. want to sound stupid. I don't want to, I don't like being seen on stage or, you know, all the, the same emotions come up, I think, as, as people are stepping into that. And so it's as the more you do it, and I think sometimes helping, you know, work with a coach to sort of how, how is my message coming across and, and getting that feedback either in a small group or a bigger format is really beneficial because we, we tend to, once we get in that place of overthinking, which I'm a, I would probably win awards in, um, I always say that the academic mindset versus <laughs> entrepreneurial mindset is 180. Like academic mindset is like study this for years, be peer reviewed. And like, you know, there's this process to bringing out your ideas. Whereas when I stepped into, you know, entrepreneurship, they're like, just try it. I'm like, I don't have to go through a, a review board for this. <laughs> oh, that feels weird to me. <laughs> and so, you know, just recognizing that it's it's something that can can evolve and um i just i got to the point where i think i was frustrated one with myself but also hearing that over and over again like i just don't know what to say or i don't if you know i'm at a networking group and i'm i don't know how to introduce myself or just not feeling like they're feeling comfortable with what they're putting out there when it comes to the the conversation or the speeches they're giving or the talks they're giving. Um, so that's sort of where my passion now is, is like helping people come in and, and, and speak so that they feel good at the end of it, right? That they feel like they've made the connection or that they've made the impact that they're trying to make with the audience they're trying to connect with. And, and they have fun doing it rather than being, Oh, here, here we go again. This this might bring me more clients, but I've got to go do this horrible thing that, you know, I I feel feel bad doing, and then you know they've missed the kind of joy that can come from mm-hmm. connecting that way. It comes down to your personality type, doesn't it? I mean, I I love talking, <laughs> and um, that's why I have my podcast, which is why, and, and I've done you know local TV and radio and and things like that, and I just love it I love that sort of free flowing and I actually did some work last year and somebody used a word I had to I had to look it up and she referred to the way I speak as extemporaneously mm-hmm. yep and I went oh what does that mean oh okay oh free flow and it is that is absolutely me I'm not I don't like to work with scripts yep. and this even dates back to when I worked used to work for Kelly services and um, I'd worked in recruitment this is going back years and I'd worked in recruitment done my own thing got headhunted to go and work for Kelly Services and I went on a training course with them and they provided all this training to be a, all this script based training which ironically was in the sort of 92 and 1992 and I can still recall the script that I never used it because I thought I, I need to be me I have to be me I can't follow a script mm-hmm. so you know obviously there are speeches that you give and I'm been booked to deliver another talk and they had said you know can you provide the script because we've got somebody who can do the sign language I went mm-hmm. oh, I don't really use script <laughs> you know? they said no that's fine as long as I've got they've got sort of a, an outline of what I'm going to talk about but you know I've had the confidence but I have had bits of training not a huge amount of speak speech speaker training there we go speaker training mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and it's interesting isn't it you know it's not necessarily just about the dialogue but it's also about the body language as well you know and the things that are suddenly pointed out to you and you go oh mm-hmm. I hadn't realized this and I hadn't realized that and also for me when I did um, some training to train developing coaches I, I always forget the title of it but I, I, le- I wanted to learn more about delivering training and once you start to observe, you you hear it, you start to observe it and actually providing that bit of space. You see, I'm slowing down deliberately mm-hmm. now because when you're delivering training, it, I, you know, I, I for me, I get very excited and I get very much, I want to deliver all this information right away because I've got so much to share. Mm-hmm. Um, but that doesn't help the person that you're delivering to uh, absorb, hear, process that information. So if you slow yourself down, mm-hmm. provide more space, 
actually, you don't need to deliver as much in a talk either. <laughs> right. I mean, extemporaneous. It's, basically, you're not, it, you're not. <laughs> yeah, it, it's conversational yet prepared. Like, you know what you're, it's not like you're just impromptu off the cuff. Mm-hmm. Someone says, go talk about cats for 10 minutes. And you're like, okay. Like, you know, you're in your zone of genius, but you're, you're <laughs> having that conversation um, with, with the audience. And, and it feels like genuine conversation, but yeah, you're right. Like, you know, if you're, if you're training, it's sometimes you, you adjust to the format or however you're, you're speaking. And I think we've changed the way we speak. Um, I mean, there's, I think it's, there's a, the theory in communication it's actually affecting um, vocal cords of women who have maybe grown up with the Kardashian. It's called the Kardashian effect. And it's that lower tonation, like, yeah, I don't care, like the breathiness of it. Um, and oh, it's, yes. it's people speak that like it's the more you hear it, the more you maybe become to to speak. And that's just like, you know, cultural peer group. We all have, you know, I was around in the 80s. And I mean, my mother used to say, stop saying like, you know, because it was every other word that was just oh, how gosh. we spoke. <laughs> <laughs> I messaged a conversation with somebody the other day and she kept on putting like in. Okay. I didn't, I didn't know people put like on the end anymore. But yes, you're absolutely yeah. sorry to interrupt, but no. just <laughs> that resonated from a, a, a you know voice note from two days ago. It's like, oh gosh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I think I see now too, uh, and I, I don't know if it's the advent of more like, you know, audio, like podcasts and energy, right? You want to bring energy when you speak. It is important, but mm. that doesn't mean you have to raise your vocal cords to a pitch where I call it where bats should be able to hear you, but humans are like, cringing <laughs> you know it's just like really screaming like oh my I, I don't even want to do it because I don't want your audience to uh feel like they have to mute but this like high-pitched very excited sound but we've raised our vocal variety to a point where it's almost uncomfortable for the listener you know it's our energy coming mm-hmm. through but now we're people might be more muting because it's just too much and I think um it's just you know certain things like that as you as you do it you start to see the differences in generations and then new technologies that come out and how that shifts how we think we're supposed to speak or um Mm -hmm. and sometimes that's emulating you know I resonate with how they they do it but then I try and I sound horrible if I if I spoke that way and so again developing that trust in your own voice is part of the process Mm -hmm. I think it's that trust in your own voice in yourself it's that confidence in yourself it's getting rid of those limiting beliefs it's believing in yourself and you know and just just doing stuff I mean I, I remember starting out doing um I mean I've always been happy to I mean I've done bits of acting in the past and I've always you know jump on stuff and then Periscope started and I started to do some lives on those and I'm sure my lives were rubbish and you know I did stuff but do you know what <laughs> it's like if people see me on social media I'll post photographs of myself professional photographs and also all sorts of uh, back crazy ones as well Mm -hmm. I've I've missed that other word out but (laughs) but, you know there's one I put on LinkedIn a couple of days ago with me wearing a pair of goggles you know Mm -hmm. it's (laughs) swimming goggles I'd like to have fun I'd like to bring and it's about bringing that and just having confidence and and loving yourself and in the book in the chapter which we are going going to talk about in the book in a moment you refer to Louise Hay and um yeah I mean that that sort of that embracing who you are and stepping into that and that trust and just loving yourself and doing that inner work which Louise Hay talks about so much god bless her and um you know I I it's the um, I'm just trying to think of the book title of her book how to heal your life yeah I think it's how to heal your life. I have got it. I've got a nice colour. I did a Louise Louise Hay workshop Mm. several years ago um, with somebody that had trained in the Louise Hay way. I've done all sorts of crazy stuff and fabulous stuff and lovely stuff and wonderful stuff. But it is about loving yourself. And I think maybe it's a British thing, but people think it's too egotistical. But it's, it's not about that. You've got to, if you can't love yourself, you can't expect anybody else to love you. You've got to have that and give that out. And it's not about love and caring for yourself. It's not an egotistical thing. It's, it's about appreciating mm-hmm. and valuing who you are, but in a, in a grounded way, yeah. in a sort of spiritual way, in a... Yeah, it's it's, in it's a, empowering it, because actually then when you do that... Mm-hmm. It's reminding me of a student you, that I... You've got to validate yourself and not look for... Ex- yeah, I worked with a, yeah. a, a... And she wanted... It was that kind of formulaic way of doing things and 
she uh, she was improving and uh, literally at the end uh, finally she just she was came she's like there's got to be something i'm missing and i said she was really her message aligned with what she wanted to do she really wanted to work with um in the law field and she wanted to be an advocate for those who were in the in the states in the foster system or the care system you know and and she had this big mission and i think her voice she just wasn't sure she could match it yet like that trust of like if I say these words, then I'm putting them out there and, and I'm almost potentially then making this something I'm, I'm going to do or like, you know, and, and I, I said, I said, you got to trust it. And I, I, when I taught in the, in the classroom, right, I, I couldn't high five. I mean, I guess I could, but I, it, it just was weird. So I, I, I tried to make sure everybody knew that where they were coming from was the speaking place they were in and they shouldn't compare to this person or that, because we're all on our own journeys as we learn how to do this, this skill we're learning. And, but she mm-hmm. stood up Absolutely. and she gave probably the most powerful speech I've ever heard from a student. And it was the whole thing was just, I was like, she's doing it. She's embodying herself. She's trusting why she's doing this. She's got the power behind her. Her voice was still very much her. It wasn't this bellowing kind of thing happening. Uh, and at the end, the it was like you could hear the pin drop and everyone just was looking at me and I said, mm-hmm. okay, I think we just witnessed the beginnings of a Ted talk and you know what? And I asked them wow. and they were like, she just stepped into it. And it was a very, um, those are the moments that I absolutely get passionate about and love is when we find that place where we step into it for ourselves and we are doing what we're, you know, meant to bring out. And, and that part of that is, finding that connection within and then, you know, finding that way to communicate to the audience what that means to, to you, but so that it resonates with them. Oftentimes with speaking or anything, it's it, people will get in their own way with it and they're, they're telling it for themselves rather than, okay, what part of this does my audience need? Um, when we're speaking, it really is about mm-hmm. the other, right? The, the speaker as the communicator of the message, but, you know, I've, I've seen many speakers. I'm like... I tuned out after the first at minute because all you did was talk about yourself. And that's great. But yes. that was yeah. 10 minutes of you kind of not connecting yourself to me. So there's this relationship that goes on. Think about a good conversation. There's people you want to talk to for a minute and you're like, I think I could move on. Or then you find some, you know, having conversation <laughs> for eight hours and you're like, well, this was fun, you know. So <laughs> I think it's it's about knowing why you're and again it it your message i mean her message is going to be probably that message in front of different audiences um it's not always going to be her peer group it could be national alliance for something and it yet the resonance from her is the part that's going to stay true and it's just pulling that out a little Mm -hmm. bit you know pulling that out and helping people feel good so that if they go into that new audience that they're not totally shape shifting into somebody else but they're bringing what they need to bring and they can read the read the room a little bit more and then know how to step in and and speak to that audience that's great that you 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 know you can do that and you can help people with that carrie i think it's absolutely awesome because as you've just said as well you know the audience that are listening it's it's all for, for them it's what's in it what's in it for me they don't want to hear you talking about how wonderful you are it's it's about how you can help and how you can serve I mean basically that's what we're all here to do isn't it we're all here to serve each other and to learn on the journey ourselves with the, the, you know what we're going to learn from it on and it's that engagement with the audience mm-hmm. I mean I just I, I end up being able to talk to people for hours and I've always looked for points when you know through all my career it's finding bits where you build that rapport up like you're saying about reading the room it's you know when, for instance in my recruitment background you know you'd be looking at a cv and you'd be hooking out bits and you start that conversation with oh gosh you lived here or you lived there or you did this did you and you start to build that rapport up and that's what you're talking about with reading the room and bringing that in and understanding and sort of seeing and and maybe connecting with people you know if you're not getting anything go turn it around going am I a bit dry today then (laughs) do I need to inject some humor are you all awake come on Mm -hmm. how was it today and get some of those yes answers coming in go come on then who had a good time getting who's how many coffees have you had come on (laughs) yeah (laughs) just and knowing how to break it but it's having that confidence in yourself and your ability to do that and step into and step into your power but getting back to 
the flip side of that, if there are people in business that it really isn't their thing. I mean, my office manager, PA, she would not want to do public speaking mm -hmm. at all. She doesn't want to do it. She, she will happily speak to people on the phone. But if I, I ask her to make calls going out, she really would rather not. But then she's absolutely brilliant at all the stuff that I don't like doing. And I love talking to people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's about perhaps then connecting with somebody that can work on your behalf or doing something in a different format if it really, really, truly isn't your thing. But you know what? I think when you step into that zone and you try something new and you learn something new, you'll find something more out about yourself. Mm -hmm. And... Um, the max where the magic happens and I think that kind of neatly well neatly does it neatly I think it does brings <laughs> us into <laughs> my dad thinks I'm a fairy because that really is what the book's about and that's how Kerry and I have met through um, both being contributing authors we both contributed a chapter to the my dad thinks I'm a fairy book project which has been and is a number one Amazon best-selling book Amazing. which is awesome so we've got that to add to our uh, our vanity bars on our website <laughs> but um that's how we've met and Kerry's story is really uh, quite fascinating and it's I it's brilliant and even you know right up to date that we we can sort of talk about that goes sort of past what you've put in the book which I think is is brilliant as well but if you'd like to sort of kind of share so with my audience my listeners Kerry you know where you are and what journey you've been on and sort of, obviously, people have heard your American accent, but sort of stitch it all together it, for everybody, just to give them a synopsis of yeah, your journey. Explain it all. Please do. The whole premise of this project and book, like the misunderstood entrepreneur, um, kind of tales from the, the beginning. Like, I like the fact that it was raw, because I know on my own journey, you know, sometimes you can look at somebody and be like, well, they look at all the success they're having, and I'm starting here, and... I don't feel that successful yet, so now what? And and I like the fact that we all told that story. So really, I stepped into entrepreneurship on um, a day in which probably made it didn't make any sense. Um, I had gone through 2016 was a year that broke me and built me, I guess you could say, in many different ways. Um, I had just started as a educational tech consultant and was very excited about that. I'd spent most of my career, you know, in the, the campus environment and, um, you know, kind of had the classic, if what academics sometimes say, like, don't leave, it's dangerous out there. And I was like, it's going to be fine. And then, you know, <laughs> I ended up in a, a company that was sh sh shifting and changing and in a, in a role, because the word consultant, by the way, what does it actually mean? Um, I think everybody who is a consultant is sometimes mm -hmm. like, well, this, this, or that, this. And, um, you know, it just, it was, it was there and I was learning. And then, you know, they, they were doing layoffs and things like that. And I found myself, um, I got going through a divorce during this time. And that was finalized just before the end of 2016. And then about, you know, 90 days later, I was sitting in New York. I was house sitting for a friend, which had been kind of a fun experience. I was working remotely at the time um, without a job. And I, I remember I talked about it in the book, but there was this moment of just like feeling like lifted and falling at the same time. It was just all the emotions and for me, I I didn't realize how much my identity as a professional mattered. I'd always been good at what I, you know, I tried my best and I'd always, you know, I felt like I was doing well, but that was my last kind of holding. Like if I had a bunch of balloons, the only one I was holding on to anymore that was familiar was that one. And it went, you know, and it just kind of floated away. And I, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, I remember going, well, this is not great. Um, Luckily, I, I because of all the stuff that had been going on, I had already moved into my parents' basement. So that least I knew um, was a, a place I could maybe land for a little bit longer, um, which is a gift because not not everybody has that ability to have that um, kind of safety net when when needed. But you know, I decided in that moment I was like, I think I just want to be an entrepreneur. And I sat down and Googled it for like six hours and started listening to people's stories. And I just felt like that makes, that makes sense. And it, it really didn't at the time. I, I mean, all kinds of things considered, I was in a place where maybe I should just, you know, go back to something familiar and rebuild. And I, I decided that I was going to be open to all things and um, started finding 
different opportunities along the way. And, and I stepped in actually, um, the first space I was in, um, being from Colorado. So explain my, my voice. I was born, um, in Kent, England, uh, moved to Colorado when I was five to parents from the Shetland islands. So I'm all, I've always been a mixture of all, all things, um, in regards to where I felt like home is and that kind of thing. So Colorado, I stepped into the hemp industry because it was booming in 2017. Um, um, I was in the CBD kind of marketing space and just sort of started finding finding my way in an area that was really the wild, wild west. And I just found it very interesting and, and fun. And I um, started working with products and kind of developing um, sales teams and things like that, trying to get the word out across, you know, across a nation that had a lot of interest, but a concern around what that meant, uh, what was CBD. So my education hat came on and I started doing that. And then in that process, I started working with women who were trying to build their business in that sector or in different areas. And that's where the, you know, fear of public speaking came up. People, I'm like, oh, you think we can work on that? And it just sort of organically started re realizing that it, adults may need public speaking communication training as well. And it's just always something I've, I've been passionate mm -hmm. about. And so I think along the way, that trusting piece in my story is really big because when all this happened, I had lost trust in everything, 100% including myself. Like, how did I make these decisions? How did I mm -hmm. fall from the adult tree, hit every branch, still be standing here, but like, <laughs> what just happened? And realizing it, something was going on and like, I had to start within. And we came back to Scotland to go mm -hmm. uh, visit my family in Shetland for my folks 50th anniversary. And, you know, like, wasn't sure I was ready to be confronted with all the family, knowing, you know, my life had just kind of fallen apart. And let's go celebrate, you know, um, you know, a successful marriage, which which is beautiful, because they have had um, a long, um, you know, relationship, and it, and it was something to be celebrated, right? And so, but along that way, came up to the Highlands Aww. in Scotland, and just started meeting women who felt wiser than me. And they, I didn't know I was on a spiritual journey. I didn't know I was on this kind of come back to myself. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, I was sitting on the banks of uh, the Caledonia Canal in Inverness. And I had fought going to Inver Inverness many times. I'm like, I don't need to go there. Went there, fell in love with it, like immediately. And didn't, oh, wow. yeah, didn't realize that there was this connection. And I remember saying, I just need to be here. This feels like home. I need to be here more often, but I need to be able to be back in the States when I want to be or need to be. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do any of that. And mm -hmm. that's when I <laughs> started tuning into all these different ways of which I could kind of create a, a life and business that went with me. And so that brings in the different aspects of, of what I do now. But I think trusting that little niggle and the niggle happened way before that moment I was sitting there. I mean, it happened every time I was traveling or it happened when I was sitting at my desk and I just like felt like, is this all I'm going to do is talk to students about what classes they need to take? Because I think I can do something. There has, how do I get a hobby that's more mm -hmm. interesting, you know? Um, and so that niggle yeah. of finding your space in a world where you can carve your own path as, as a business owner or as, uh, making an impact from a nonprofit standpoint, whatever that would be, but it it evolves, and that's where I started trusting the process. And it, honestly, I mean, it's been a not a guessing game, but again, like, does this fit? Does this fit? And then you know, all the world had to reinvent itself, and so things change from a speaking scenario, well, yes. right? Yes, like, absolutely. I was going to launch programs on how to help you get on stages like TED and things like that, and then every stage canceled. I was at a conference when they canceled South by Southwest and everybody at the conference was like, if that's getting canceled, like this thing's big. And so my whole idea of my model mm -hmm. shifted and that's where kind of now I work with people online through so communication from social media all the way to a stage because not everybody wants to do a TED talk and not everybody should do a TED talk. Um, but they do want the confidence to be able mm -hmm. to connect and communicate that's effective for them. And funny enough, um, I now live in London, so full circle, have yeah. moved back here, and I was, it was probably December, 
you know, really resident here uh, again in February. Um, Social media and I have had a love-hate relationship since it began. Um, But I met my now fiancé on an application called Clubhouse. And, of course, that journey took a very different way. But probably a month before that, I was working with a leadership board for an organization I was with called Polka Dot Powerhouse. And we were all saying stuff and and setting intentions. And I really still, I'm not, sometimes I'm not very natural at that still. I I know I I do them and I do them in my own way, but I was trusting the process. And someone's, I was like, if you could just get me a a calendar, because we're talking about calendars as gifts. I was like, just men in kilts, that would be great. And everyone laughed. And, you know, now (laughs) I have, he has a kilt and he is from Scotland originally. So just the, the kind of random things that that happened again when I was starting that process of trusting I had a big wall of it was just me just me like there was no I didn't need the opening I didn't want the opening um but again I've kind of stuck to that place of how do you find that that fit and now I'm um yeah you know evolving here too so again moving a business over here and starting that process and again it's that learning curve and 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 figuring out what's a good fit and, and what will work. But it's it's interesting to see the evolution because I, I go back and I, I have the, the book in my hand. And I'm like, well, even the, the cover, I didn't really put this together, but taking the leap and into this over this kind of gorgeous kind of, I don't know, I mean, fairy like woman. It's like a chasm, but that's yeah. almost like from one country to the other for you, yeah. isn't it? And it just sort of going. One, and, one continent to another, I yeah. should say. And realizing the story all that started with an idea within me, but it was all the conversations I have had in the last five years, generally with women who are pursuing their own thing, entrepreneurs, giving the advice, giving the, you know, tips to encourage and seeing like, okay, I could have said no to many of these things, but because I said, I want something different. I don't even know what that looks like. I couldn't have painted the picture I'm in now, but I, I started, I always say like, I got a blank canvas and I got to choose what colors I put on there and then I started to make the picture starts to almost make itself. And so, um, I love that. I love that description, Kerry, that, I mean, and it is, you know, when you, this is what I like to encourage, you know, when I'm working with clients, be it as, you know, from a coaching perspective or in my recruitment industry, when, when people have had, you know, this change thrust upon them, the redundancy like you had as well, you know, it's, (laughs) It's you're being presented with an opportunity and it's down to how you see it. It's down to your perception of that. I mean, last year I coined my eight mindset methodology, which is acceptance, perspective and energy. So when you accept what you can and can't change and shift your perspective around it and channel your energy accordingly, it brings about different results. And when you look at redundancy as an opportunity to then re- rework things or any sort of major changes in your life, whatever they are, it's bringing forth an opportunity to to do things in a different way uh, but it's recognizing that as an opportunity and taking action because all too often I was in fact I was having a conversation with somebody um yes it was either yesterday or the day before in fact it, yeah see and yes the day before yesterday and we were sort of discussing somebody that we both know and th- this person's being sort of all of these messages keep coming through but you know they keep on being <laughs> ignored and you go how many more messages do you need you know but it, it's it's really being observant because you can set intentions you can put the word out you can put this out to universe I mean the law of attraction you can then talk about the um the RAS the reticular activating system which then sort of triggers and watches an opportunity because you want you sort of say don't don't think of pink elephants you can't but think of pink elephants but it's what you put out in your, your words, thoughts, words, actions, it's, it's how, what you verbalise, what you think, how you act, how you behave is what you attract back in. So when you're attracting it in, mm-hmm. take note, yeah. do something with it. Yeah. <laughs> and but I just love that description that you said of you've got this opportunity. And they said, likewise, for me, 17 years ago, when I left my ex-husband, I recognised it as an opportunity to have a second stab at mm-hmm. life in this lifetime. And my life looks nothing yeah. like the life I used to lead, like yours doesn't. You know, yours has changed yeah. dramatically. And now you're here in the UK and you've got yourself a Scots guy with a kilt. Hey! I know. And I mean, <laughs> is it true? Yeah, it, it, it's, is it true? It's, it's, <laughs> it, 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 it is. And I mean, um, my friends point out that, well, you did ask, you got more than a calendar. I was like, I know, but that's, I'm okay. I'm, I'm very excited about that. And again, it's things I never truly thought 
I was looking for. And I think that's something that um, when we're stepping into our next, like you said, the next stage or making a shift and it doesn't have to be as dramatic as redundancy and divorce and it doesn't have to be like everything falling apart, but that when you've got the niggle to try something, right? Um, I always tell people, be open, hear all the options, ask questions. I mean, I did a lot of that, maybe a little mm. too much because my academic oh, background. Oh, absolutely. Be curious. Yeah, I asked so many and, and, and you know, it, it evolves and it shifts mm-hmm. and it changes and it's at least mine has. I know some people are really great saying this is where it's going to be and this is the timeline and my life's just never been that way. I'm, I'm, I'm structured a little bit more freely than maybe, um, maybe I, I should be at times in the sense of I, I do sometimes, you know, like, take on those those opportunities and if it fits it fits but just to say you know like it it does come down to trusting and then finding a place and a place where you can shine and you know I think that's the one thing I recognize is as Mm -hmm. anybody who's a woman or anybody who's really doing the work to do that building their own business or, or taking on new projects for their you know business and and developing whatever their impact is that's that we're going to have to speak about it. We're going to have to share it. We're going to have to, you know, put it in the, out there. We're going to communicate whether it's through a book or a podcast or stage or, or however it is. And, and I just think that if we um, can help, or I mean, you know, if we can help women who aren't necessarily, you know, loving certain aspects of, of public speaking, whether that be a stage or like for me, if you put the live camera mm-hmm. on me in the beginning, I was not a happy camper because I didn't want to be seen. I was afraid of that because there had been a lot of like there was some st- residual stuff from the past that I felt like if, if I don't know, it just didn't feel like a safe place, I guess. And so, you know, but learning that you can find your, your way um, and find your voice to match it, I think is a beautiful mm-hmm. thing. And I think this book does that. I think it, when you go through the stories, it's maybe, you know, part of my story resonates, part of yours, or it could be a completely, you know, another author's who's just like, yes, you know, and I think that's, yes. it's, this yeah. is the thing I wish I'd had when I was stepping out and trying to do that, taking that leap, because there's, it's mm-hmm. almost like having 10 g- good friends who've just sat down with you by, you know, having a cup of tea saying, well, here's, here's what I did. And, you know, if it, here's what you could do. And it just yes, is like a absolutely. nice big warm blanket of comfort in a book form. <laughs> I think that's great. I like I like that analogy. It's brilliant. But do you know what it is? About, it's about talking and speaking and not and I'm talking generalistically as mm-hmm. well, because in my days of being married to my ex-husband, I didn't have a social network of my own. Uh, and I was had faces pulled at me if I was on the phone to my parents. And it took me to leaving him to opening up my network of friends mm-hmm. and just speaking my truth, how I'm feeling, you know, yeah, I, remember, I mean, obviously, when I first left, I think I was going through the whole backstory, going at yeah. everybody. Oh yeah, <laughs> and I've learned to edit that down. <laughs> and, you know, it's not as raw as it was. It's having those open, honest levels of communication. And I see you, you mentioned and it mentioned it earlier on, but I see communication like as a, as a dance, as a conversation, as a dance, and it's about sort of you're giving each. You, you, you've got a, a rhythm that you get going into when you're having a conversation with somebody. Um, which is lovely. And that's when the conversations can go on forever, especially when you're in, you know, very much in rapport. And like we are mm-hmm. now having this amazing conversation discussion, me giving you space to have that time to talk your stuff, because that's what's important for this podcast. But likewise, I'm going, oh, I want to ask Kerry this and I want to ask Kerry that and having that, you know, because I'm curious and having that open mind, having all those sort of wonderful, you know, open questions to ask people, because when you have those conversations, this is where this People hate hate the word networking, but this Mm -hmm. is how you can network naturally Mm -hmm. because it's just about having open conversations with people. And if you know what it is you want to do and what you want to achieve, once you have these conversations, you're in discussion with people, this is where the magic, this is where the connections start to happen because that person will have a conversation with somebody else, will have a conversation with somebody else, will then potentially refer them back to Mm -hmm. you. And Likewise, if you are then involved in a project that you're really excited about when you come to sort of delivering talks, you know, if you are really impassioned about what it is you do, and this is where I really empower people to align themselves, you know, with who they are authentically, personally and professionally. Mm-hmm. I don't think then 
that sort of stepping out and delivering a talk is necessarily because you you want to share that mm-hmm. message and as you say it could be via the written word it could be via a, a pre-recorded podcast it could be via something live it, there, there's so many forms of communication mm-hmm. available to us these days that w- would potentially fit yep. with how you want to deliver your message and the and the beauty is we we are all different and it's about connecting with our audience and the ones that resonate with us not trying to connect with everybody Mm -hmm. and emulate somebody else it's about embracing the uniqueness that is the beauty of you Mm -hmm. yeah and I think it's that's perfectly said and and it's the stories right like stories that we've told it started maybe here and we've edited it or it's changed hasn't shifted the the nuance of the story or the the truth of the story but just where we're at in the process of it but I think that's also I mean think about telling a story about yourself is vulnerable right adding in a public mm-hmm. somewhere watching or listening or seeing you on stage or whatever. Um, that's another element of that. And I love Brene Brown. I could go on about Brene Brown forever. But, you know, like she talks about people have to earn the right to hear parts of your story, right? Like you don't have to go and tell the the audience mm-hmm. if you're not like all the elements yet, right? Maybe you, it'll, you will at some point to a specific audience and that kind of thing. But I think that there are all those little things like, and it usually happens with the introduction at networking, right? People either just sound like, you know, they just talk about the product and I have no idea who you are if they're selling a product or, you know, if they're having a service that's it, it, they never get to the, the, the crux of why someone might approach them. And I've all, I, the way I work through that is just sort of, um, you know, how do you tell an introduction so the people remember you to come back up to you and continue the conversation, right? It's not like, that's it. And everybody's going to flock yes, to your table. Yeah. But how do I know that I need to go talk to Sarah? Because gosh, I know three people that she needs to talk to, or I want to know more. Maybe I'm a, a good fit for mm-hmm. her, your program and vice versa. And it just, but we sometimes get in that space because we're nervous of the, the things that happen, like the judgment or the, I'm going to say it wrong or all the other things that happen. We um, forget that we are bringing ourselves that's what people are paying attention to. And so we've got to give a little bit of ourself that's comfortable to us. We might not be ready to share everything, but can we mm-hmm. find a way to fit a little bit of our personality or who we are into why we're standing in front of this audience trying to get to know them? I was thinking this is this is another podcast altogether. <laughs> we could really sort of talk about all of this in so much more detail. I think we need to sort of draw this to a close for now. We could have part two, Kerry. Yeah. And um, yes, thank you so, so very much for coming along and sharing your story and your experiences and your insights and all of the wonderful stuff. So how do people get in touch with you if they want to hear more about sort of communication, public speaking, confidence in that area? Yeah, definitely. So... I'm on uh, Instagram's a great way um, for social. So it's, um, it's Carrie Moncrief. So um, it's just, that's my handle. And then it's also um, my website's CarrieMoncrief.com or Carrie at CarrieMoncrief.com. I'm not that, I'm obviously not creative when it comes to adding anything else to that name. Um, but basically reach out and I'd be happy to chat and, and connect. And if, if I can help you in any way, I'm happy to, to do that. Well, thank you again so much. And thank you all, of course, for listening. And if you've enjoyed this episode, please do rate, review follow subscribe and help share the happiness globally even further i said no it's global already but even further globally that'd be absolutely awesome so this has been me obviously sarah j naylor at harnessing happiness and if you want to get in touch with me (laughs) you can find me at sarahjnaylor.com and if you just put sarah j naylor in across the platforms you'll find me on linkedin and all the other places as well but if you head to my website there's a down freebie download too so you know just get in touch i love to hear from people take care and uh, have a good rest of the day all of you take care goodbye Thanks for listening to the Harnessing Happiness podcast with Sarah J. Naylor. If you took value from the content, please follow the show on your podcast app. And to find out more about Sarah's ape mindset, visit sarahjnaylor.com. That's 